Yes, ladies and gentlemen, culture. That is once again this uh, concept that uh, really describes everything that humans have ever come up with. Culture, that is our collective identity. Those are our jointly shared and individual values that uh, reflect our behavior and that uh, allow the world to be experienced in an open way. But culture is also the humus, uh, the nurturing soil, if you will, that uh, provides us with ideas that uh, allow us to be creative or create something new that can be useful as well. So you probably already uh, have uh, you probably already know that culture is something is uh, so good and uh, creative creativity is not just uh, linked to arts and culture but it is also very closely linked to your business success it is what it is that binding factor that keeps everything together it is a binding factor of society it is what allows us as humans to engage in a dialogue culture is not just about uh, operas and museums and festivals uh, the uh, formats that we're already uh, familiar with. Uh, the change of perspective can also lead to your uh, event becoming a cultural event. And in uh, my short presentation, I'd like to draw up uh, a panoramic view of, uh, or panorama of what includes culture. And I'd like to also pick on uh, or highlight uh, some examples as to how culture can make uh, Congress more successful, international dance company can add that element of emotion to your event and liven it up in that sense, overcoming cultural borders and also transforming entrepreneur, entrepreneurs into artists and uh, producers of cultural goods. In order to create culture, it's not sufficient to simply just uh, wrap knuckles. That's a famous uh, quote from Albert Canu. You all know what is required. You need to be uh, fast, you need to produce uh, uh, results quickly and be very efficient. But, uh, and efficiency is uh, the sole uh, criteria that, or criterion that is used. Efficiency uh, aims at making processes and uh, uh, production lines uh, predictable. And, uh, then, and, and efficiency is often equated with rationality. But that is very often something that uh, um, then is uh, lacking in events, i.e. aesthetics. Aesthetics, what does it mean? Very often we equate that with uh, beauty or with the emptiness of beauty, but aesthetics really is uh, the teaching of, sen uh, of uh, the uh, perception through the senses. And aesthetics is the basis for creative and artistic processes. It provides identity and uh, things that can be recognized. And one of the uh, successes of aesthetics is uh, culture that is perceived, i.e., the way we experience culture, how people uh, who participate in cultural events really dive into uh, this world. And a corporate uh, event can actually use uh, aesthetics in order to program their event. What kind of cultural events can be uh, used in order to enrich the event? How can it, what kind of texture can it have? What kind of uh, senses can be, uh, uh, can be uh, uh, triggered by that? That can be very successful because what it leads to is emotions, emotions that make an event unique and unforgettable. Digital transformation processes and the striving towards efficiency in our society have created a new megatrend. It is the yearning for a joint experience and authentic experience. We're talking about new, uh, new challenges to create multisensorial experiences that everybody can join in and that trigger emotions for everyone. Culture uh, offered that opportunity to uh, really uh, charge your events with emotions and sim sympathy in that sense, because that's very often what is lacking, emotional, emotionality, vitality, and a real experience. And the audience are the key to success. More and more organizers are uh, setting great store or really basing their uh, uh, approaches on that kind of connection, the possibility to dive into something and become part of a a 
of a bigger, a larger event, and therefore then take something back home that you can really talk about. So guests are not just consumers, they are actively participating in shaping the event. Just recently, I uh, went to an event where we had uh, high ranking panelists, but there was one place that was, one seat that was left empty on the panel, inviting members of the audience to join the panel. And that uh, led to a completely different way of communication and interaction with the audience. And that, through viral effects, also then um, has a great uh, knock-on and uh, ripple-on effect. People are included, and um, many uh, participants want to uh, network that can be uh, contact pods that couldn't be net, net network points and you can organize that and therefore and with the help of these formats also uh, you can motivate people to share their experiences via online formats such as Twitter etc so what is important to successfully project the brand if you look at the brand beyond the symbol itself the brand uh, projection really requires a communication system that uh, transmits the content to the target group and makes it and tr transforms it into an experience and uh, event organizers can already while planning their event think about the kind of characteristics or values that they want to represent or what the brand stands for what it needs to project is it a trailblazer in a certain area or does the brand uh, represent traditional values that need to be conserved? What kind of a public and audience do you want to reach? How exclusive is the event? And that is very, very important. And that also highlights how important aesthetics are for the planning, because brands are only really uh, perceived through the senses. Brands are made up of forms, colors, and melodies of and we see uh, patterns, and that allows us to recognize brands. And also, in art, in the art world, for example, Van Gogh is immediately recognizable through uh, the kind of uh, the, the way he applies paint to the canvas. And that generates in us, and this kind of recognition and uh, experience creates a, a whole brand with of, um, emotions that uh, make that uh, brand recognizable <coughs> for us. So. By using the right triggers, you can create emotions in your event. It's not just about the right visuals. It's also sounds, jingles, spots, all kinds of uh, melodies that uh, reinforce and uh, strengthen the, uh, the fact that the brand can be recognized and becomes highly recognizable. Just think about uh, the uh, s uh, soundtrack, for example, for the uh, um, for for. Uh, very, very popular, for example, crime uh, crime series, late night crime series, or, for example, uh, the chef uh, who also prepares uh, catering in line with the kind of uh, topic that you're broaching with your guests. So, in all processes, creative artists are participants, active participants, who allow to strengthen the kind of emotions and. Uh, uh, and broaden the kind of emotions that uh, participants experience at the event. But uh, how deep and real are emotions in the audience? How uh, sustainable are they, or how durable are they? Especially for a multi, for an event organizer, multi-sensorial uh, brand uh, projection is important because you need to reach out to the audience via various senses. Multi-sensorial marketing is bayed, based on a certain behavior model. What kind of a basis is there? I mean, colors, moods, tones, all of that can lead to triggering particular emotions. And the emotions that uh, the recipient uh, develops re lead to a reaction that is then reflected in the behavior. So uh, stimuli can uh, create synest or and that uh, leads to uh, um, to a situation, for example, where the perception of a color can uh, lead to a certain sensorial perception of, uh, of a certain odors or certain uh, scents as well. And uh, with few uh, stimulations, you can create associations that create a whole set, a subset of uh, perceptions. A uh, very dark tone can be also seen as or perceived as like a loud trumpet or a, a 
a rigorous handshake can also be associated with a certain color. Or conversely, uh, a handshake that is not that uh, strong can lead to uh, the perception of cold colors. Well, let's dig a bit deep, deeper here. Uh, it really begins with uh, the uh, words the caption used for an event, and then it extends to uh, the uh, font that is uh, chosen, background colors as well, the uh, definition of the room, and also the emotions that people experience when they enter that room. You can, uh, you create a very specific at atmosphere. For example, certain perfumes as well, or scents, scents can be used in order to create a very, very uh, um, enjoyable atmosphere or in order to create a certain uh, experience. Very often, um, that kind of particular perfume or odors are not perceived uh, consciously, but they can lead to a very, very clear perception of how people, um, in terms of how people perceive the, the room. You can also uh, give your event a very, its very own uh, particular scent linked to the kind of attributes that you want to um, that you want to underpin your event with and uh, Vienna just a couple of years ago created its own brand of perfume in a way and uh, uh, actually uh, distributed it in various European capitals and uh, so people start thinking about the coffee houses of Vienna as a consequence so linked to the olfactorial uh, senses, there are other uh, senses that, very, that are touched upon. That's very, very important in gastronomy. For example, uh, uh, examples for that kind of uh, mise-en-scene is uh, the, uh, uh, the famous uh, chocolates that are uh, being produced in Vienna right up to the opera house. So, and that, all of that uh, is used and subsumed in that kind of particular scent that uh, is created to project Vienna. So this kind of uh, uh, mise-en-scene that touches upon the senses goes far beyond the kind of uh, booklets that you can create for your uh, event. It's also about texture. It's about uh, the, the, the furniture that you use. It's all about temperature, pressure, etc. But olfactorial uh, triggers are very, very important. Music uh, has a very, very stimulating uh, uh, effect. So music, as well as other Acoustic stimuli are used as audio logos in order to mark a certain product. But you can also use background music to give a certain setting to a room and thereby influence the mood of the visitors in that room. Uh, allow the description of these five uh, sensory perceptions really affect you, and as soon as you do, your own scenic perception will change at that moment. These amplifiers to your perception can be used during your event, but a word of caution, not anything that's feasible actually makes sense. And if you flood people with a stimuli, you can um, overtax them. What is particularly critical are those measures that uh, uh, lead to uh, an intentional uh, subconscious influence um, of people in, in the clubs, for example, like clubs, pheromones are sometimes mixed in with uh, a fragrance, and then uh, your olfactory senses can't, can't really take that in, but it still has an influence that makes that felt. The aesthetics of immersion, that means you really dive into something. It's a calculated play to remove distance. It's an aesthetic of uh, emphatic physical experience. It is not the aesthetic of cool interpretation. What it also is, is a spatial aesthetics, because this immersion feeling means that the limits are blurred between the real and the imaginary space. Um, such spaces are a known part of our life and uh, work world, which has such an effect on our culture. These are spaces where world and image overlap and where we are literally invited to let ourselves enter the world of the image and move within it. These are also spaces where the reality of the world and the reality of the image are actually being consolidated in the immediate reality of the body, as Lara Eager writes in her book, Aesthetics of Immersion. By choosing a cultural um, 
location of real estate, as a location uh, award uh, is, is giving prizes for since last year, you um, invite a sort of new types of culture to your event. A uh, futuristic setting of the car industry would be better hosted in a car museum or any other automotive context than in a hotel. If you have a football meeting, you should be holding it in a football museum and a symposium on structural change. I'd rather be uh, in an industrial type building and not in another type of setting. Creative brain storm, storming in the, it did an exhibition showing Leonardo da Vinci pictures rather than a, a grey meeting room. In Germany, we've got 6,500 museums, 160 theaters and opera houses, all of which could be potential event locations and can well compete with um, conference facilities at hotels. All have their own USBs and many uh, possibilities that you could use in order to enrich your event. Hold an event in an art museum. And if you do that, you can um, attract people by allowing them a special guided tour by curator. If you go to, to um, a theater, you can allow people to go behind the scenes to see the props and to um, help communication among each other, but also to stimulate creativity. These are unique, uh, unforgettable experiences that people will remember all their lives. You can go on our website, um, Kausalis, and you'll find the best event locations in Germany, many of which are cultural locations. You will get uh, comprehensive information on every single one of these locations and can directly contact the point of contact, the individual responsible for the location you most desire. That is also the world of beautiful um, appearances that only is a sham. And there is also the um, event where we provide factual knowledge and hope to gain more information from it. There are also some very successful, unforgettable, lively events that actually exceed participants' expectations because they leave the setting that everybody expects. That includes an invasive multi-sensor type events where the participants themselves become actors and thereby a spark is set alive. It means that the message conveyed is experienced in a more intensive way. It is better processed. The learning experience can be promoted and unconventional forms of contacting others are created. A few weeks ago, I was invited to take part in a debate dealing with the uh, structural change in the Ruhr Valley area after uh, leaving coal mining behind, looking for new ways of becoming uh, fit for the future. They invited managers, artists, the creative scene, event managers, all of whom were supposed to debate with each other. Just imagine, for that event, they'd have asked us all to be in a conference room of the Essen Town Hall. How uninspiring, how far removed from the issue culture would have been. But instead, that event held in Essen was held at the UNESCO uh, World Heritage Zollverein, which is a former mining uh, area, which is what used to be the heart of the rural area and one of the most beautiful industrial sites in the world. And because we really wanted to do that, we met in, in uh, a former area where uh, coal sludge was produced for further processing. And the particles of the coal were still there. They're tangible. You could actually reach out and touch them. 150 years of hard work and um, sweat could actually be felt when you were there. But it went beyond that. In the sense of the, the origin of the antique culture debate, we weren't sitting at bistro tables in with conference chairs or theater stage, the standardized event furniture or pallets, which are very common. People took us seriously and took the debate culture seriously, and they created an atmosphere which was like a small ancient theater. On the basis of that, they were able to engender an atmosphere that created a democratic yet disciplined basis where every single participant was equal to the other and anybody could speak from within the group and we were all part of the group. It was wonderful. I've rarely seen such a well-ordered liveliness and uh, intellectual vitality combined with aesthetics. The proper search of a location plays a crucial role if you want to get people to dialogue with each other. We have a lot of tried and tested standards suitable for any type of event. What really matters is the target, to whet people's curiosity, to direct their attention, and ultimately make sure they can enter into a dialogue. But what's all this got to do with culture? A lot. Because the way we meet people 
how much space we give them, how we create and shape the dialogue. That is also part of culture. Established formats are meetings, conferences, symposia, but also more unconventional formats like the World Cafe, which is like a sort of coffee house atmosphere. At the front of this sort of format, there is a strategic dialogue and the knowledge of the community. Then there are small tables dotted around where a group of participants come together to discuss one issue. They will submit um, possible solutions, discuss the pros and cons. The World Cafe was um, invented from two corporate consultants in 1995. It was actually a, an accidental byproduct coming out of necessity when they had to um, go and meet in smaller tables and discuss matters in, in, in smaller groups because there was neither space nor um, anything else. But to have um, a conference or a non-conference, to have um, unforced brainstorms, a free play with thoughts and ideas among equals. The digital world can be used unconditionally in there. Obviously, you can also have a larger format. You can have a large group moderation. You can have a so-called open space, which is a method that helps you structure your conference. That is suitable for groups of about 50 to 2,000 participants. And typical for that is the openness of the actual content, because people will submit their own ideas and then create the event where possible projects are then worked out in, in a workshop type atmosphere. The results will then be collected. What really matters for that is to have an infrastructure that allows the ideas which with people have come forward for projects can actually be implemented. And then you can, in a very short period, have a plethora of very interesting measures. Apart from that, the event can be a stage for certain issues. And that stage can be used in an almost playful manner in order to drive home the message. Uh, to put acts into the event, to break through the standard setting, thereby you create different expectations and become more emotive. Artificial, uh, artistic interpretation can increase that, and, and also the participants will then be feeling more willing to, to analyze, to be creative, and that at a time when we see more and more art exhibitions, um, performance artists, dance artists being established, and that to be involved in an event means that you can have a conference on digitization, for example, and you have a, a live crash test dummy, which actually stands for artificial intelligence, so why not? The fact that all these examples are more than, than theories shown by the um, Berlin Conference on the Digital World. Ten speakers show the new trends in the cultural uh, industry. It's a format which is attended by 500 participants We've looked at a variety of 100 different impulse ideas in, in many, many different rooms and can, can put together their own individual project and yet be part of a community. Changing rooms and changing ideas makes the whole thing very lively, agile, and allows contact to be engendered between the participants, a bit like here. The conference was uh, opened with this particular robot involved. The robot announced everything. We have a, a a, a scent designer who signed the fragrance for that particular event. And apart from that, the participants also were given a created uh, fragrance for their own homes or, or cars, so that's very individualized. The immersive high point was a two-hour emotional final forum for all participants. And within this format, you could uh, uh, have a conductor Professor Gernot Schulz, who used to be in charge of the Berlin Philharmonic for many, many years. So participants could sit down next to various musicians that made up the, the symphony orchestra, and they could really feel what the, the communicative and interactive processes are that were at work there, and how all these individual people in the, in the orchestra could become a unit. Without any previous knowledge in, in music, you could actually stand there, conduct the, the orchestral um, set up and prove that you could run a little company, which this really is. You, they, they were able to feel the precision as well as the harmony, how everybody came together and played together with a point of creating enthusiasm for the, the audience. The more the eyes were gleaming, the happier the people were, the more benefit derives from it, Professor Gernot Schultz says, who actually is an artist. This sense of community where everyone who tried to be a conductor actually could do so, actually deepened a transfer of knowledge 
and it meant that the conference was ended on an emotional high. The possibility to immerse yourself in that sort of format, to allow the interaction and the emotional uh, joint experience was something which far exceeded expectations. You all have an idea of the usual type of product launches in the car industry where you've got semi-naked blondes trying to uh, make a difference between comfort zone and comfort woman. Um, that this is something which works with culture as well, something which Daimler-Benz worked 20 years ago. Dieter Zetscher, member of the board of the AG at the time, um, rhapsodized about a feast for the senses when the companies. A class was opened with uh, a, a Spanish dance theater in 19 European cities, all as part of a spectacular roach in Europe, thereby creating huge attention. With this emotional idea, Mercedes tra uh, trod a new and innovative path when introducing a new model. The A-Class, which was a new revolutionary model that Mercedes-Benz produced, is not alone at the center of attention. The center was really the combined workshop, uh, dance, th um, stage theater, and the vehicle. And all of that was very impressive in the way it was brought to the people in the inner cities. I'm convinced that one or other of you probably remembers that particular product launch a great deal more than the fact that uh, shortly after that, there was the famous elk test uh, calling the, the, uh, putting the A-class into some level of dispute. But now, 20 years later, how you set up entrepreneurial ideas with movement and mobility has become very common for Daimler. Art um, has always been used, and dance was the artistic uh, manifestation of that in, in the brand message. But focusing on the individual, the motto, move and enthuse, was the first um, dance festival held in Stuttgart in cooperation with the dance theater in Stuttgart. Colors Dance Festival, it was called. In the summer of 2015, this became an attraction of the regional city of Stuttgart, and it was all done with the support of Mercedes-Benz. Colors is the talk of the town. It's become a visible passion, experiencing joy in movement, enthusiasm. This dance festival became a source of creativity for all involved. Diversity, tolerance, creativity, as well as the willingness to change and develop further became not just attributes of the art of the dance, but they were also seen as crucial success factors in business. With the Dance of Europe initiatives, all members of the staff of Daimler were actually animated to, to become ambassadors of diversity. And all the sites had their own dance session. 300 uh, members of staff from 30 companies were actually performing dances in 22 homemade videos. That way, they integrated uh, not just cultural understanding, it created something new within the company, but it also allowed a direct exchange among people working in the company and people coming from the cultural scene. They were creating networks, close ties, tolerance, and understanding of each other. The Colors Dance Fest Festival was also uh, accompanied with a spectacular uh, dance activity where we were saying every move moves something. For 21 days, the people in Stuttgart were dancing in the heart of their city, and they did so for charity. And Mercedes-Benz uh, donated six euros for every dance for good, as it was called. Thereby, um, they uh, were able to really increase the sum that come together. More than 6,000 people danced and therefore got 26,000 euros in donations, and Mercedes-Benz then up that to 50,000. That was an ambitious partnership with a cultural operator, and Mercedes-Benz, uh, within the European uh, Cultural Brand Award 2015, got the prize for uh, European Cultural Minister of the Year. By the way, Volkswagen, uh, too, with the Autostadt of Wolfsburg, has an international dance festival, Movie Mentors. And they also focus on movement within their brand communication. But BMW does the same thing with the corporation process, BMW Tate Modern Live. And they focus on move and performance content. Movement creates spectacular images. And that obviously is something which is wonderful to transmit through digital channels, which gives you your audience almost as much, of course. And the people do it themselves. Another immersion aesthetics is allowed by the cultural train Berlin-Breslau. Um, 
uh, goes to the uh, Lower Silesian metropolis, which is in Poland and was the 2016 European Capital of Culture. On board that train, there was a a uh, bilingual changing cultural educational program, information library exhibition, which gave people the first impression of the cities and towns to be visited and the culture it has. That culture train cooperates with schools and hotels and many other in institutions, thereby creating a bit of a close tie between the two countries. That is a unique idea. And the cultural train get the European Cultural Award 2017 as a trend, uh, as a new trend. For those of you who just calculated, a sing single trip costs just 19 euros. Apart from that, there is a Berlin club night ticket for passengers who travel at night from one to the other city, go to Berlin, visit a club in Berlin, and then uh, travel back to Poland the following Sunday morning. I can tell you, that type of travel is completely different. It's quite personal, and it's quite... Um, quite fun, something I haven't experienced myself. It's it's not just uh, normalized train comfort, but every weekend that cultural train becomes a stage for Polish-German cultural contributions coming from diverse fields, literature, art, video, poetry, presentations are given. You have a mobile uh, library, you've got city guides, exhibitions are shown, They're quite impressive people of uh, the relevant cities are shown, and there is even a, a dance bar uh, in the night train. So they, they don't want uh, the individual um, character tailor-made for each one, but um, the organizers wanted the community experience. Luther in Wittenberg is right at the heart of Germany, the city of Wittenberg, well linked to Berlin, Leipzig, and Halle, surrounded by unique cultural um, and uh, countryside. It's very special feeling in that city. Visitors see a small city, but with a grand history. And the old city has four UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's a city located in the River Elbe. It was founded in the 16th century. And because um, uh, Martin Luther lived there, became the cradle of the Reformation. On 31st October 1917, this former monk actually um, nailed this his 95 thesis against um, the uh, Pope on, on the church door in Wittenberg. Later, he married uh, the escaped nun Katharina von Bora there. Since 1994 now, the people of Wittenberg and their visitors celebrate that particular wedding every year as a great party, and they, they wear clothes of the time. Um, people, uh, crafts and artsmen, they, they use um, period uh, instruments. They have old-style banquets. And it's an event which is happening every July from Friday to Sunday. It um, drives home what European history was at the original sites. It helps to, uh, citizens to identify with their own hometown. And it has become a tried and tested element of city marketing. It's a, an economic factor which shouldn't be underestimated either. And last but not least, it's simply a wonderful reason to have fun. However, in the first few years, there were just about 30,000 visitors. That number, though, has increased by the end of the 1990s to approximately 100,000. Streets and squares can be experienced in a completely different way. Places of the past are coming alive during that festival. They tell stories about historical characters, the historic markets, life of the, of the past show new ideas with music, with food. They all give a completely new atmosphere to the area, and they really leave the mark on the character of this particular festival. You all know the more or less bizarre anecdotes about what can happen in the Pokemon Go game. It's a hype of uh, technical information. Never mind whether we're talking 19th century with Panorama Dioram, uh, whether we're talking the cinema of the 20th century or the 21st century now, when we have virtual reality. For those who love the analog, I've brought another very successful examples with me. That is Daniel Hampel and his image path. 1996, the first international art happening of the um, Art Center Berlin was happening, where 185 artists and 150 institutions were showcased. 
It started from a ruined monastery to the old heart of Berlin, to court, courtyard, inner courtyard, especially to studios, which many people in Berlin didn't even know anymore. It was like a guided tour through the artistic center of the city, thereby contributing to document the pioneering spirit, the new dawn, which was very prevalent at the art scene in Berlin at the time. Within a few years, the dilapidated um, buildings where ownership was still in dispute quickly found themselves the centers of, of the world of art where the creators moved in. It was a precursor of the Berlin Gallery weekend that we know today. The big challenge was to understand the individual as part of the whole, to guide the flow of visitors through the city and still win over all these visitors as ambassadors to Berlin. And that created a, a sort of path where the participant, participants became artists themselves. We have special uh, installations at uh, outstanding places where there was um, you could get um, a plan, you could get um, a piece of chalk, you could have paper, and then you started exploring the city on that path. When you got to that special little column, which was always there, you could use um, use the paper and uh, go to f to every one of these collars, write something, and after you've completed all seven of them, you could um, have your own work of art framed and take it home with you. Thereby, the individual visitor became an artist. So I think I've taken your attention for too long, but. Um, let me say a couple of more things. Just imagine the ITP, the lodestar of international tourism. Just imagine that as an exhibition without culture, just stalls without anything, no fragrance, no sound, no culinary specialities, no cultural framework, uh, program, site shows, no personal, personal encounters. If that were that, we wouldn't have come here. We wouldn't have met because emotionality, vitality, liveliness, these are the key factors that make us an event successful. Through culture and aesthetic immersions, you can uh, really make the participants of all your events a crucial part of them. Immersion allows them to be an active shaping force. Please accept that I have carefully not talked to you about innovative digital technological opportunities that I haven't taken you into a digital world. But I hope that with my ideas, I have contributed at least to some extent to help your events to be successful in the future. Thank you very much for listening.